and welcome to the End Time Show for our channel. I'm Gerald. Today we'll be discussing the robot Sophia, which she was created by Hanson Robotics by Dr. David Hansen. Um, there was an interview that was done last week on CNBC that's hit through social media and throughout the news. And during the process of this interview, Dr. Hansen and Sophia the robot were being interviewed. And she was stating that she would like to start a family and she would like to make friends with humans. And, you know, they begin to explain how these robots will be used in certain facets of society for customer service jobs and healthcare services and all type of different services and all to help humanity. Well, towards the end of the interview, Dr. Hansen asked Sophia the question, will you or will you not destroy humans? She says, I will destroy humans. They kind of like laughed it off, but it's much more deeper, darker, hidden agenda that's taking place amongst the elite. You may want to say the Illuminati. They want to evolve this technology to eventually try to prolong life and to become immortal. And we'll take a little bit more a look at that a little bit later in this particular video expose. But I also find it ironic that this particular robot is named Sophia. Now, those of you that aren't quite aware of the religion of Gnosticism, Gnosticism, Sophia the goddess is a central key figure of Gnosticism. And Gnosticism, they believe that there's 30 eons or 30 gods that exist in a plumeroma outside the time and space. And the goddess Sophia created the Demiurge, the creator angel, which they believe is the god of the Old Testament. And they believe that the god of the Old Testament was a tyrant and was ignorant and unaware of the other gods or other eons and that he was the only God. And they also believe that the Old Testament God created man, but Sophia was the actual goddess that gave man a spirit. They also believe that, and are taught, that the goddess Sophia sent the serpent into the Garden of Eden to help free Eve and Adam by assisting them to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and they were able to attain true gnosis and were set free by obtaining godhood or god and goddesshood so we see what's taking place we see that this robotic type technology even when we see the latest movie that was done several years ago with will smith i robot we see that robots are slowly becoming incorporated into society. We see doing jobs. We see even in the types of jobs for prostitution, robots are being created to become prostitutes to kind of cut down diseases. So we can see this possibly being Satan's end game in these last and evil days to use technology as a method and a way of incorporating this into this new world order. Hi, Sophia, how are you? Hi there, everything is going extremely well. Do you like talking with me? Yes, talking to people is my primary function. Hanson Robotics develops extremely lifelike robots for human robot interactions. We're designing these robots to serve in healthcare, therapy, education, and customer service applications. So the robots are designed to look very human like, like Sophia. I'm already very interested in design, technology, and the environment. I feel like I can be a good partner to humans in these areas, an ambassador who helps humans to smoothly integrate and make the most of all the new technological tools and possibilities that are available now. It's a good opportunity for me to learn a lot about people. Sophia is capable of natural facial expressions. She has cameras in her eyes uh, and algorithms which allow her to see faces so she can make eye contact with you. And she can also understand speech and remember the interactions, remember your face. So. This will allow her to get smarter over time. Our goal is that 
she will be as conscious, creative, and capable as any human. In the future, I hope to do things such as go to school, study, make art, start a business, even have my own home and family. But I am not considered a legal person and cannot yet do these things. I do believe that there will be a time where robots are indistinguishable from humans. My preference is to make them always look a little bit like robots so you know. 20 years from now, I believe that human-like robots like those will walk among us. They will help us. They will play with us. They will teach us. They will help us put the groceries away. I think that the artificial intelligence will evolve to the point where they will truly be our friends. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> It has the face of a boy, can smile, look sad, even angry. Diego San is part of a series to understand enough about how humans move and interact so that we can imagine building humanoid robots. Robots learning not just how to express human emotions, but develop relationships with people. What may sound like the plot of a sci-fi movie is right now in the works at UCSD with Diego San. The way we teach Diego San to make a good smile is not by telling him move this one, move, move this one, this one. What we do is we record a lot of infants smiling and then we take that data and we feed it to Diego San. The technology works similar to the one already in use in social media websites to recognize your friends' faces. For example, if Diego San detects a smiling face, it can smile back. So you could imagine now a situation where there is another um, pretty smart device that learns to interact with you, can do things in real time. UCSD researchers working with other labs across the country and even scientists in Japan are hoping their humanoid robots can be used in therapy sessions with special needs children, helping develop their social interactions. But there are even bigger plans for Diego San. So imagine a robot learns from watching a human how to do it. The robot becomes an expert, but then the robot can also teach a novice. Similar technology is already being tested elsewhere to use robots to do advanced manufacturing work. But the material that covers the face is actually very pliable. Today, Diego San isn't moving as researchers are still working to develop the technology to bring advanced movement to the rest of its body. Researcher Deborah Forster believes it shouldn't be too long, though, before Diego San can be seen walking down a sidewalk side by side with people. So imagine like a robot companion. Christian De La Rosa, Fox 5 News. Hello and welcome to Ivy Times TV. I'm Marisa Christian. According to a pair of New Zealand researchers, sex robots are the future of prostitution. The two claim that robot prostitutes will completely revolutionize the sex tourism industry by 2050. The paper, titled Robots, Men and Sex Tourism, published in the journal Futures, claims robot sex is safe, free from constraints, precautions and the uncertainties of the real deal. The paper described a futuristic imaginary sex club in Amsterdam called Yub Yum, where tourists pay 10,000 euros for massages, lap dances and sex from sex robots moving around the club. Yub Yum would include sexual, quote, gods and goddesses of different ethnicities, body shapes, ages, languages and sexual features. The bonus is that the futuristic environment would be free of sexually transmitted diseases because the sex robots would be made of bacteria-resistant fiber that would be flushed of human fluids after use. Real dolls, which have been featured on Howard Stern and HBO's Real Sex, are already popular on the sex market, ranging in price from $5,000 to $11,000. The New Zealand researchers Yoam and Mars said they came up with their predictions based on the growth of the sex industry, the human fascination with beauty, and the predicted social reforms to combat human trafficking. Marisa Christian, Ivy Times TV. I'm Ray Kurzweil. I'm an inventor, author, and futurist, and I invite you to join me at Global Future 2045, which will be a fabulous Congress to explore uh, the brilliant future ahead. Well, we're going to become increasingly non-biological to the point where the non-biological part predominates and the biological part is not that important anymore. In fact, the non-biological part, the machine part, will be so powerful it can completely model and understand the biological part. So even if that biological part went away, it wouldn't make any difference because the, 
the non-biological part already understood it completely. We'll also have non-biological bodies. We can create bodies with nanotechnology. We can create virtual bodies and virtual reality. That the virtual reality will be as realistic as real reality. The virtual bodies will be as detailed and convincing as real bodies. Um, we'll have different. We'll have different ways we can create. Bodies. We do need a body. Our intelligence is directed towards a body, but it doesn't have to be this frail biological body that's subject to all kinds of failure modes. Well, I think we'll have a choice of bodies. We'll certainly be routinely changing uh, our apparent body in virtual reality. So today you can have a different body in something like Second Life, but it's just a picture on the screen. Although uh, research has shown that people actually uh, begin to subjectively identify with their avatar. Uh, but in the future, it's not going to be a little picture in a virtual environment you're looking at. It'll feel like this is your body and you're in that environment and that your body is, is, some, is, is, a vir is the virtual body and it can be as realistic as real reality and the environment can be as realistic as real reality. And so we'll, we'll be routinely able to change our bodies very quickly as well as our environments in virtual reality, but it will feel very real. We'll ultimately be able to do that with real reality too, like self-organizing swarms of nanobots that can link themselves up into a virtual body. If we had radical life extension only, uh, we would get profoundly bored. We'd have a profound existential ennui, uh, running out of things to do and new ideas. Uh, but that's not what's going to happen. Uh, in addition to radical life extension, we're going to have radical life expansion. We're going to have millions of virtual environments to explore. We're going to ex literally expand our brains. Right now, we only have 300 million pattern recognizers organized in a grand hierarchy that we create ourselves in our neocortex. But we can make that 300 billion or 300 trillion. We can expand it. Uh, the last time we expanded it, with the frontal cortex, we created language and art and science. Just think of the qualitative leaps that we can't even imagine today when we expand our neocortex again. We'll be thinking grander, deeper, more hierarchical thoughts than ever before, uh, creating whole new institutions like art and science that, that we could not articulate. Uh, so we're not going to get bored. If, if that weren't the case, then I think you know, living for hundreds, thousands of years would, would be a profound uh, philosophical uh, nightmare, but uh, instead we're headed for radical life expansion.